fellow collectors and welcome to Long's Toys. Today we are taking a look at Voyager Class Comic Universe Tarn from the Transformers Legacy Evolution line from Hasbro. Really nice packaging. I really like the artwork here on the front for the vehicle mode. And then some really great artwork here on the side for the robot mode. Over on this side it's just half of the picture that they have for Evolution this year. Not really too much going on on the bottom. On the top just have the logo. And they have moved the QR code for the tech specs here to the top of the packaging now with Evolution. Spinning it around to the back, we have the robot mode and the vehicle mode. And then the Evo Fusion gimmick is just to link his two cannons together into one larger cannon. Not really much of a gimmick if you ask me, but sure, let's go with it. So that's pretty much it for the packaging. I'm going to go ahead and get Tarn out of the box and we'll take a closer look. Here is Tarn in robot mode and honestly, he's pretty perfect. He is ridiculously clean. There is hardly any kibble at all on this figure. I mean, the most you can make an argument for is the extra set of tank treads up here for the shoulder pads, but it doesn't get in the way of anything. You kind of just blends nicely in. I mean, this is a ridiculously clean robot mode. Even here on the back, hardly any backpack. It just looks phenomenal. The paint applications are really sharp. All the molding is really nice. That head sculpt is fantastic. You have that Decepticon symbol face mask there. Really, really works well. Just all of the paint here, really sharp Decepticon symbol. Got some uh, different shades of purple and everything. The gold here for the kneecaps. Just everything about this guy is pretty fantastic. They did a really, really great job with him. Articulation-wise, heads on a ball joint so you can look pretty decently up. Now, this piece kind of moves down here at the base of the neck as well with the transformation so you can kind of utilize that to get a little bit more out of the articulation for the head if you'd like but normally you can look down about that far look up about that far you can tilt a little bit side to side certainly look side to side no problem you have a hinge here where the shoulder actually meets the body and then you have a rotation and then you have kind of another hinge down here which is really more for transformation but you can utilize that if you'd like then you have a swivel right above the elbow, 90 degrees, maybe slightly over 90 degrees there in the elbow. You have a wrist rotation, plus he actually has opening fingers. Now obviously everything but the thumb is together on one piece, but still very cool that they do open and close on the hinge right there. You have a waist swivel, kick really far forward, really far to the back, and really far off to the side as well. So great range of articulation in the hips. And you can kind of see how the skirt piece is kind of built into the leg so it moves forward and it moves back with that but then when you need to go out to the side it kind of also can move a little bit on there so that's really really well done you have a thigh swivel there you have really far probably over 90 degrees there in the knee and then in the ankle you can go front to back because of the transformation and then of course side to side as well so a huge range of articulation on this guy Again, it really just feels more like an action figure, but of course he can transform. But it's just one of the absolute cleanest robot modes I've ever seen. Uh, he does come with some accessories here. So we have these two guns, and then we have this centerpiece here. Now if you want, you can spin this around like so, and then you can peg this into one of the two pegs on the forearm here, and you can have kind of like a double cannon on his forearm, something similar to how Megatron has a gun on his forearm. Looks really, really cool. Of course, you can take this off and you can use the gun separately. And they look really good. They are actually done in translucent purple plastic and then painted over top of them, which I think gives them a really nice effect. I think that works really well. So you can see there are two of them. And they're not exactly the same molding. They do look different, but both of them are really neat. Uh, of course, you could just have him hold the two guns if you want. He can just put them one in each hand. And you don't have to open the fingers to put the guns in. They just peg right in. I mean, honestly, you could even have the fingers open and you can still hold them just to show that off. But yeah, you can have them just, you know, dual wield, gun in each hand. Or you can take the two guns and do the Evo Fusion gimmick, which is just <laughs> pegging one into the other one like this to give him a long cannon. I mean, it's fine. You know, it's another option. Uh, I, this, to me, is not that much of a gimmick. But it's fine that you can do it. You know, if you want to give him a long rifle, you can have two guns. You can have the double-barreled cannon on the wrist. Uh, also, you have some options to mount them on the back. So if we take these two pieces and we just rotate these down. You can take this. This piece will swivel around like so. 
And then you can peg these in here. Make sure I'm doing this correctly. And then you can peg these into this peg hole on the back if you want them to be over the shoulder like that. So you could mount them over the shoulder or if you just want them to be on the back, you could take this, uh, rotate this piece again, or actually I guess you could just leave it on like that and kind of peg them on like this. And then you could pop them on the back here like that if you just wanted to have them on the back like that. That's another option. So you've got a lot of options for just including two cannons. There are a ton of ways you can use them with this figure, which I think is really cool. You have a ton of options there. So that's really, really fun. And sometimes this is a little difficult because uh, this piece moves around on its own, that swivel piece, but you can unpeg it fairly easily. But yeah, it's honestly, it's just, it's a really solid robot mode, hardly any kibble, Paint applications look amazing, tons of articulations, and the accessories work really well, and you have tons of display options with them, so he's pretty perfect. I mean, honestly, like I said at the beginning, I don't really have much to complain about this guy, if anything, honestly. I think this is a pretty uh, much slam dunk in terms of the figure, and I don't even really know that much about Tarn. I know he's from the comics. I didn't read those comics, unfortunately. I know he's a very fan-favorite character. But even not knowing anything about this guy, I think he's really great. I mean, it's a fantastic color scheme, really fun design. And I just can't get over how ridiculously clean this robot mode is. It's just pretty much perfect. But let's go ahead, let's get into the transformation. So transformation is a little bit more intricate than you might expect. Uh, we'll start by just going ahead and straightening out the legs, pegging them together, and then you can flip the feet down like so. And then you can kind of just Put them about there for now. They're eventually going to flip around, but we'll get to that more later. We're going to take these two pieces and flip these down. And there are these tiny little tabs right here that they're going to peg into. So just pop that right on there. And then this section is going to pull away from the back and then kind of accordion down like that and then rotate around 180 degrees and just leave that there for now. We're going to come around to the front. We can move the arms up out of the way. Grab a hold of this chest panel, and this is going to flip up like this to unpeg. At this point, we're going to take the two tread pieces that are actually in the body and pull them away. And then that'll allow us to rotate them back slightly. So we can start to rotate them back. Don't want to rotate them around all the way just yet. Just want to get them a little bit out of the way. And then we can rotate the head back into the body like so. And then this section is going to come up. Now the directions tell you to hook this little gray tab here into this little section right here. And I haven't really been able to get it to actually peg in. But I don't feel like you need to. I, I mean, this is where it needs to be. It's just kind of like a little cow catcher on the front. It can stay right there. It's not going anywhere. I tried to push too hard and the whole section popped off. Luckily you can pop it right back on. But like I said, I wouldn't put too much stress trying to make those actually tab in together. They don't really need to. You just need to have this stop about there. Uh, so now we're going to take these pieces and finish rotating them around like so, just like that. Then you can bring this down. Um, actually, can I do that? I'll leave it for now. You can, we'll do it in a minute. Uh, we're going to take the arms. We're going to rotate them around. Nope. These need to stay where they are. We're going to rotate this around here at the arm like so. We're going to take the arms and bring them in around like this rotate this section around 180 degrees and rotate the fist around 180 degrees like that and now you can see how there's kind of a natural angle here that's going to kind of bend to about that and then we're going to utilize that joint i talked about earlier to bring this in and there's a little tab slot right there which is going to tab in right there so this is going to come in and that is going to tab on right there and then we're going to do the same for the other arm so we're going to make sure this stays in place hold on to this spin this around take the arm rotate the forearm piece around 180 degrees and then rotate the fist around 180 degrees bring this in bend it there so that that angle kind of goes as far as it can and then utilize this to come in and tab into the side of the leg at this point, we're going to flip down this little piece right here. So you want to kind of get a nail in here. You can kind of see the seam right there. 
and that's going to flip around 180 degrees. So we'll do that on both sides, flip that around. And now this is going to come apart like this and swivel around, but there's not really a clearance issue, but you can see this tab here. It needs to fit to the right of this. So you might have to kind of push it a little bit, but it will go. And then that can fit there. And then you can go ahead and peg this in to this spot here on the forearm. So this will come in and clip like that. So we're going to detach this, bring this around so that it fits in there, and then peg that in like that. Now, why does he have tank treads flat on the underside of the tank? It's a little weird, um, but not a problem. So now we can take this and bring this down. There's a little translucent tab right there, and that's gonna tab in right there. So when you bring this down, actually it's the second one, I apologize, the middle one right there. So this is gonna come down and tab in like so. Is that tabbed in? There you go. You'll hear it click. Now you're gonna have to bend these, not at this knee. I mean, you have to bend it at that knee, but also where the gray here is, it's kind of a double joint. It's not really like a full knee joint, but you have to kind of disconnect it. Now it might be easier to do this one leg at a time. Okay, it actually worked out pretty well at the time. So you can see how it disconnects there. And then you have these tabs here and here, which are gonna tab in right there and there. And also it's gonna tab onto these little sections here, up here. So this is gonna come down. You can kind of push it back a little bit on that double joint. Okay, I need to rotate this back a little bit. There we go. And that'll drop down there. And then you can line up the pegs underneath there on the side. There we go. And there we go. There is Tarn in tank mode. Now, of course, we're gonna wanna bring this piece back in and you can use these two tabs right here to tab into these two spots right here. So this will just drop right on like so. And there you go, he's got the extra firepower. He looks great, I mean, he's got four uh, turrets there for cannons whatever you want to call them I think the tank treads all look good it's a little weird that he's got molded in wheels but they don't actually spin because they're not wheels so <laughs> he's got molded in wheels that don't really move but he looks good I think they did a really nice job with this you know all the colors come through you still have the pop of gold all the silver the gunmetal gray the purple this kind of like dark bluish purple color it all works really well together and just overall, I think he looks really fantastic. Um, you can still spin this around because that piece has the uh, the light gray from the top part. So that because that part's pegged in, you can still, although apparently I'm going to knock this off. I think I have these upside down. So I'll just flip these around and that'll probably help. There we go. So that can spin around. Also, you can rotate these up. Now, if you have them up, they're not going to be able to spin as much because they're going to hit into the legs but you can spin pretty well like this. And then if you wanted to raise them, you can. So a little bit of articulation there. Uh, if you wanted for some reason to take this and, and peg this on top here, if you wanted to give them like a, a solo cannon mode, and then I guess actually let me peg these in like this and then peg this in. If you wanted to give them one giant cannon, you could do that as well. So again, you have options, which is pretty cool. Or if you wanted to just completely leave that off altogether, you could. I think it definitely looks better with it on, but it is an option. Uh, really, the only complaint is that the, the fists really do just hang out here, but it's not that big a deal. It's a minor complaint, but it would have been nice if they could have hid them somehow. But yeah, he looks pretty great in the vehicle mode. I think Tarn is as pretty close to a perfect figure as Hasbro is going to make. Uh, he looks absolutely fantastic. I love the design. That Decepticon faceplate I think is really cool. Now, I know the design comes from the comics, but they've recreated it pretty faithfully here. I think everything looks fantastic. I love the color scheme. I love the design. Great articulation. Great accessories. Fun transformation. It can be a little wonky first or second time you do it, just mostly getting the arms into position in vehicle mode. But you do it once or twice, it's really not an issue. I think it's fun and easy to do back and forth. I don't really have anything bad to say about the guy, honestly. It's one of the cleanest robot modes I've ever seen. Like, I just can't get over how he has 
no vehicle kibble really at all. You know, like I said, maybe you could complain about the extra treads up here, but I don't really think it's a problem. And I think it's fun that he kind of has like all these treads in a row. I think it's a fun design. He's really perfect. I definitely recommend picking him up. Uh, one of the best Voyagers I think we've seen in a while. And just everything works with this guy. I really don't have anything bad to say. So definitely recommend picking him up. I think he's absolutely fantastic. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, thanks so much for watching.